Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. A quick warning before we begin. This story does reference abuse, so if that is a topic that you are uncomfortable with, you might want to skip the story. Now, let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user OFingCraps. Me, 24 female with lovely daughter, 4 female. She made up a crazy story and got CPS called on me. Freaking out. Yesterday was the most hilarious yet terrifying day of my life. I dropped my daughter off at preschool in the morning. It is a public school. Went home, cleaned a little and then decided to take the day and do absolutely nothing. At around 1 o'clock I hear a knock on my door. I don't answer. Strangers showing up on my doorstep freaks me out. I get a phone call. I think it's weird but again, don't answer because I didn't know the number. I decided to do something with my life and shower but not until I check my voicemail. Hi OP, this is Jen with Child Protective Services. Please call me at this number. Insert panic attack. I call back, freaking the F out, wondering what the hell I did. Did someone else do something? I'm about in tears with sheer panic. Jen answers and I immediately ask if everything is okay. She says yes. However, she needs to meet with me in person. I tell her to come on over. When she gets to my house, she proceeds to tell me. My daughter told the school nurse I kicked her down the stairs. I just sat there with my jaw on the floor, eyes wide open in utter disbelief. She checks my house for who knows what and asks me a few questions. Apparently, my daughter rubbed her eye giving her a red mark and asked to see the nurse about it. She told the CPS worker this big story about going camping with mommy and daddy and how fun it was to sleep in a tent. The next morning we picked up a batch of kittens and she was super excited jumping up and down to see them when I supposedly punted her little body down 20 stairs onto the concrete basement. She expressed her love for me and I would assume she was giggling the whole time. I just see it. She also told the CPS worker about her two sisters and how daddy lives next door. Absolutely in shock, not knowing to laugh or cry, I explained to Jen that we did not go camping. Her father and I do not talk, nor does he live anywhere close. She has no sisters and there are no kittens in the home and I would never kick my child down the stairs. Jane says she has to talk to a couple of character witnesses and will give me a call. I picked my daughter up and the first thing out of her mouth was, Mom, I got to see the doctor today. Which is when I realized she just effing wanted to see the nurse. She loves the doctor. The attention, the sympathy. She knew she was lying but probably felt like it was a big deal and not wanting to get caught, she came up with this elaborate story. I would assume she was intimidated yet loved the sympathy from the staff. I asked her what she told them and she giggled. You kicked me down the stairs. And I told her this was not funny. You can't make these stories up. I made her go tell the teacher this was not true and apologized to the teacher but it didn't look like she was convinced. So tonight we have parent-teacher conferences and it's going to be awkward. I'm terrified my long talk didn't stick with my daughter and she will keep fibbing about this story or they won't believe her retraction and try to take her from me. She is four and is completely lost on how huge of a deal this is. I am considering putting her in child therapy. She said a weird life and I think it wouldn't hurt to start early on her mental health considering her father is a nutcase. I am a survivor of domestic violence. However, she never saw it but it left me with major depression and PTSD and I feel it may have affected her. I have also been debating therapy because she says things I don't know if are quite normal for her age. Things about her appearance. She has told me she hates herself. She's not pretty, etc. She reminds me so much of myself as a child and I wasn't okay. I want her to be okay. I want her to be mentally healthy and I am concerned. I am concerned about this lie and how things are going to play out today. I guess I am looking for words of support, suggestions for dealing with her self-esteem, tips for dealing with CPS and suggestions on how to help my daughter understand making up elaborate stories can get people in trouble. Well, be the first thing is I'm sorry that you had to go through what you did with your daughter's father. 
I don't know if you've had help with that. I hope you had. But if you hadn't, maybe you should also look into that. Because even though you think your daughter might not be affected by it directly because she didn't live it or see it, it did have an impact on you, which I believe could trickle down to her. Children may live in a different world than we adults do because of, you know, the magic in life. But children can be very perceptive. Don't ever confuse being young with being clueless. So on that note, I think you're on the right track with having her see a therapist to help her out. And regarding the teacher and CPS, I would say if you've never done anything wrong, then you've got nothing to fear. And the truth, plus the character witnesses, should help clear the whole thing up. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you have done if you were in OP shoes and your child said something like that to their teacher or nurse? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Tvex says, Your daughter cannot be the first child to come up with some elaborate and horrifying lie. CPS investigates a lot of these cases and I'm fairly confident they will quickly see she's making it up. Of course, take it very seriously, but I wouldn't freak out about it too much. Side note, here are some of my son's greatest hits. Screamed across target, Mommy, stop beating me! Then sat there and laughed, waiting for reactions. Screamed in a crowded store, Mommy, stop stealing all that stuff! And again, stood there and laughed his full head off. Zombie Lunch says, My son is five and likes to make incredible stories about people he knows and occasionally there is violence in it. The way we have handled it is, we have talked to him about what a story is, what a lie is, and what can happen to the people he makes stories about if he isn't clear that he is telling a story. The rule in our house is always start the story with once upon a time and if something does happen it makes it easier for us to tell. His bio mom has an addiction problem and has had violent friends and boyfriends, so of course we worry. Therapy is a good idea. However, our experience has been most people won't deal with children under the age of six unless there is a court order somewhere. Since CPS is looking into your family, you may want to use them as a tool to get your child into therapy. Yellow Ducky 21 says, Wow, your daughter has a very interesting imagination. The educators at your daughter's preschool are legally required to report any suspected child abuse. They were not trying to get you into any trouble, they are just doing their job. It sounds like she may be having trouble dealing with her father not being around. I think that getting a referral for a child psychologist would not be completely crazy, even if it is just only a couple of appointments. My suggestion to you is perhaps at home try to create some silly stories together to give her imagination another outlet. Go to the library and find some wordless books. They have a story in the pictures, but you could make up other stories as well. Opie's Edit, thank you all so much. I believe therapy is going to be a good start for both of us. As one of you pointed out, my own self-esteem may be a reason for hers. As I thought about it, I could think of a time or two I put myself down and she was in the bathroom. I guess I never really thought about it. I have a meeting with my therapist tomorrow afternoon, so I will start by talking to him about the situation and ask that he recommend a family and child therapist. Doing this alone has always been really hard. I have a constant fear of failing her. I feel like seeking assistance is a good option since we're flying solo. This kid is my life, my best friend, my everything, and I want to give her the happiness I never had growing up. I'll update in a few days after the CPS things calms down and I speak with my therapist. Thank you. Alright, well, OP got some pretty good advice and I think something sparked in her and she's going to act upon herself, which is a good thing. So let's move on with the update, which is very extensive, to see how this story ends. Hi everyone, first of all I want to give the usual thank you to everyone who took the time out of their life to give me their words of encouragement, opinions, as well as their own kids say the darndest thing stories. It really calmed my nerves and brightened my day. It also gave me a lot to think about in regards to my parenting, how my daughter is perceiving life while transitioning into preschool and what I need to talk to my own therapist about. Secondly, I'd like to address some of the more controversial comments. A lot of people felt one way or the other, ranging from You people think therapy is the answer for everything to She's just a kid to Oh my god, your daughter is a pathological liar. Of course she needs therapy. All I have to say is you are both right and wrong. My child does not have some kind of disorder and need immediate mental health counseling. She's just a kid who hasn't yet learned the importance of clarifying a story or understand how her lying can hurt people. She has a wild imagination and probably didn't want to get in trouble for making a story up and soaked in the sympathy she was receiving. 
we have since had several talks about the difference between fibs, stories and lies. She seems to get it. On the other hand, I am excited for therapy because I feel like it's going to help me figure out the best approach to parent her. I think she has soaked in some of my negative energy. She is bound for daddy issues and it wouldn't hurt to get her into a safe place where she can play and talk to someone about how she's perceiving the world. This person can then give me advice on how to help her and guide her through life. How to instill a sense of self-worth and happiness I never had and I'm only learning to find through therapy be myself at age 24. Better late than never. Now, a little more about her dad and why I think therapy is important. It might have seemed like he was absent in my last post, but what I meant by he's nowhere close, we don't talk, is we aren't neighbors, lol, and he hasn't been around lately. Her dad comes and goes as he pleases. I have let him because I have always thought a child should have a father and some was better than none. I felt like it would be effed up if I kept a daughter from her father. I couldn't do that to him and was scared of the long term effect on her. I previously stated he was abusive, so any time I floated the idea to him that I could just stop this game, he manipulated me and would make me feel terrible as if I was angry with him and keeping her from him to hurt him, but in turn just hurting her. I feel like the story of mummy and daddy took me camping was a cry for help. She sees all the nuclear families in preschool and is wondering why dad and mom aren't together so she makes up a fantasy land in her head where we are. Which is wild because honestly, I don't think she likes her dad and I swear I have nothing to do with that. I always encourage her to love him and tell her how much he loves her and can't wait to see her. She always cries and begs me not to make her go unless she can hang out with Nana the whole time. He has to see her at his mom's, I won't allow it any other way. I try not to pry too hard but anytime I ask why don't you want to see your dad, she just says I don't know. This is another reason I think therapy is crucial. Maybe there is something she isn't comfortable telling me. I should also mention he fell down the stairs a few weeks ago so I think this may be where she picked up the stairs story. As I said before I'd update with CPS and after I talked to my therapist. Well, CPS talked to their character witnesses, my mom and stepdad, who both had nothing but great things to say about me and confirmed that my daughter has a wild imagination. The caseworker said she would close my case to my mother but I haven't heard anything which concerns me. I have called and left voicemails yesterday and today so I guess I just keep waiting. I saw my therapist on Wednesday. We talked about how this was kind of a blessing in disguise as it made me see the value in my life. It made me realize everything I had and that it could all be taken from me. We talked about the self-esteem thing and I realized that I thought I had all my bases covered in parenthood but I never thought about how my own self-worth would affect her. We talked about how it's great that I'm active in recovery from my long battle with depression and how from the time I was pregnant and getting beaten until the time I had a nervous breakdown and got the help I needed, my daughter had two people who hate themselves in her life. It's great that I'm helping myself and committed to bettering myself and life. I'm excited to work on my relationship with her more and thrilled for every free second I have with her. But she still has one negative influence who I've let poison her for way too long, who didn't appreciate the little things like I do. The last time he saw her was three weeks ago. He called me angry because him and his mom got into it. I talked to his mom. She said she was joking with my daughter as usual and he just flipped his lid. His mom told him he couldn't stay there. He freaked and started packing. I told him to take my daughter to my mom's and I would come talk to him. We talked about how his mom is overbearing and he looked me right in the face and said he didn't freak out like he used to at me. Mind you, he freaked out on me in front of my daughter one time because my boyfriend was helping me run errands and we dropped her off together. But I believed him. I called his sister when I left and she told me he had in fact thrown a classic fit, telling my daughter, Nana's crazy, we're never going to see her again, throwing crap around, etc. Since then I have given him four more chances to see her. He got a DUI, wrecked his truck, lost his job and stopped paying child support months ago. Why was I still letting this continue? I felt like he deserved to have his daughter, right? How can one keep a kid from their dad? My birthday weekend he backed out because of the mom thing and he didn't have anywhere to have her. The next weekend he backed out because he fell down the stairs. 
This weekend, he backed out because he exhausted himself running errands and is in excruciating pain and asked to take her Wednesday. Then Wednesday morning, he texted me, hey, I have to work all day, so I probably will just get her in the morning. And I had a moment of clarity. The night before, my boyfriend got angry with me as we were talking about the situation. He has told me over and over, I need to stop letting him come and go. He also kept saying it's not his decision or place. I know how he feels and stop asking him for advice if I won't take it. I thought because he grew up without a dad, he should understand why I want my daughter to keep seeing hers. When her dad texted me and bailed again in the morning with work as an excuse when he doesn't even have a job, I wanted to find my boyfriend and give him the biggest apology for being so stubborn. He was right the entire effing time. This was more harmful than beneficial. I was an idiot. A big effing idiot. So my therapist and I talked about what a negative effect her dad is having by hating himself, self-destructing and feeling entitled to a fatherhood he has done absolutely nothing to deserve. He's still abusive and I'm still easily manipulated. I've been scared he would take me back to court and get joint custody. I'm an idiot for not chopping him completely out of our lives the first time he beat me nine months pregnant. I held on to the idea that my daughter has a dad when she simply doesn't. I tried to force him to be one and he's not. My therapist told me to stop looking at this with feelings and take myself out of the situation and look at it logically. I stopped feeling empathy for his bad luck this month and put myself in his situation. I'd do anything to see my child no matter what crap I was going through. He does nothing but make excuses. I realized he has to get out of her life until he can handle being a consistent healthy factor, if ever. He did this to himself. I'm not a monster. He is harming my child and I'm going to stop standing for it and protect her. I had it backwards. No dad is better than this dad. Which my boyfriend looked me in the eye last night and went on about how if this keeps going amazingly as it is, he can't wait to help fill that void. Not that I need him to, but it was nice to hear someone else really cares about her. Thursday morning rolls around and I already know when he texts me I am just going to ignore it. I wanted to take my day off and spend it with my kid. We went to the zoo and went shopping. I got her her most favorite test toy ever. I can't believe it, mommy. Thank you. It was a great day. She deserved it. We deserved a day to bond and work on our relationship. Not him. Not he who comes for one day and leaves for the next 45, erasing all that bonding. I'd be there tomorrow. I'd be there the next day. I'll be there forever because I effing love my child and I'm a goddamn mama bear and it's high time I act like it. He doesn't even text me to pick her up Thursday morning. No sweat off my back. Then about 10 p.m. he texts, Hey, sorry I've been so unreliable. Can we try Saturday and Sunday? I have so much crap going on right now, it's stupid. And the whole not having a vehicle thing really Fs it all up. I tell him that he should probably just take some time and get his crap figured out. I'm tired of the same old song and dance and she doesn't need someone teetering. He responds, I'm not trying to teeter. I would like to get on a set schedule of every other weekend, plus when you need help. I tell her that he's in and out of her life and to let me know if and when he's ever ready to be a constant factor and stick to a regular visiting schedule. I'm not going to keep allowing him to give my daughter less than she deserves from you. Figure it out. I also told him to save his spiel. I've heard it over and over. That we've done this over and over. She doesn't want to spend time with him and she's old enough to know why so I'm not going to make her. Then I said, bye. He doesn't fight or argue or call. He just shuts up. Which is probably the most terrifying part about this. I expected war and he went silent. I'm having an extra lock installed on my front and back door right now. I spoke with my lawyer to make sure I am within my rights to pull this. I gave her school a copy of the custody agreement. I have full custody and visitation is up to me. As well as a written letter stating that he is not allowed to pick her up and they are to notify me if he tries. I called child support and found out he is $5,777.92 in arrearage. I'm debating whether or not to drive by the place he's staying so I can figure out the address and turn him in. The first thing he said when I told him about CPS was, You didn't give them my address, did you? Do I feel like a douche? Should my daughter have her father? Yes. The stupid in me that has no self-worth feels that way. But when I remove feeling and look with logic, I see that doing this and getting my child into therapy are probably the two best things I'll do for her childhood. Along with bettering myself. 
So in a way, I'm thankful CPS came to my door and made me see what I had to lose. I'm thankful for therapy and for helping myself. I'm excited to keep making the right moves as to not F my kid up, to not fail her. But if CPS could just go away now, that'd be great. So thank you for reading. I know this went completely into a different story on you. I know I will catch a lot of criticism for my decisions no matter what path I take or have taken. The most important thing is I believe now more than ever I am doing the right thing and it's better late than never. Well, Opi, I agree with you. I think you are making all the right decisions and you're doing it out of love for your child and for yourself, which is the best thing you could do. As to your ex, like you say, he needs to figure his crap out and we'll see. But honestly, not holding my breath on that one. So at this point, I'm just going to wish the best for the both of you, you and your daughter and your boyfriend. He seems cool. Thank you for sharing, Opie, and take care. Now let's move on to the next post. This is by user Color a Queen. I can't sleep in the same room as my boyfriend when I'm at your house. Fine, we won't sleep there. I was a recent college graduate who had made the immoral choice to move in with a boyfriend without getting married. We moved in together in another state about a six hour drive from my parents, who lived about two hours away from the boyfriend's parents. When we returned to visit, my parents made us sleep in separate rooms and beds because we weren't married. After a visit or two like this, the Christmas holidays rolled around. We were planning to be in the state for the whole week between Christmas and New Year, splitting the time between the two families. We start by spending two nights at my parents' house, then around dinner time the third day, we leave and head to his parents. My parents are surprised and confused that we are not staying longer. They expected us to split the time evenly. My reply was, well, at his parents' house, we get to sleep together, so we want to spend the night there. Bye. Before the next visit, they let us know that they have decided that since we are a committed couple, they will allow us to share a room even though we're not married. Well, I don't think there's anything I can add to that. You said it all, and apparently they got the message. Thank you for sharing, OP. And it's that time that we've reached the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed today's stories. I really did enjoy reading them to you. So if you did, then don't be shy and go ahead and give the video a like. And don't forget to subscribe or even share this video with people that you might think will enjoy my storytelling. Also, if you have the time, go down to the video description and check out all the links I have for you, from our Discord community to my channel merch. And finally, I'd like to say thank you for watching. It really means a lot to me that you enjoy my videos. And having said all that, I'll see you guys in the next video.